Hi, my name is Anathanasia, and I live in the Philippines. This is a story by Mom Janessa about a creepy, unforgettable day when she was in her teens. My mom lived with her aunts and uncles, and she wanted to visit her family. Her family lived in Valencia on the Bukidnon province of the Philippines. At the side of their house is a bridge, and underneath the bridge is a river. One time, while visiting her family, my mom decided to wash her clothes, and my grandpa told her to wash his clothes, too. Decades ago in the Philippines, people usually washed clothes near the river because there was a lack of running water. The river water was also safe to drink, so people tended to live near the river. After my mom prepared the things she needed to wash the clothes, Grandpa helped her carry it all to the river. The river was peaceful and very cold, and the weather was sunny, so it was a good day to wash some clothes since they'd easily dry under the sun. My mom was enjoying washing the clothes by hand when she heard footsteps coming from the bridge. The bridge is made of thick wood, so it makes sounds when someone passes by. My mom was facing the bridge, and she immediately looked up so she could greet the person because it could have been her neighbor. But nobody was there. She looked all along the bridge, but there was no one in sight. She continued her work, and she heard another set of footsteps again. She glanced back at the bridge, and still no one was there. She felt a little worried, but my mom is brave, so she let it pass. After she washed all the clothes and hung them up, she heard yet another set of footsteps. She turned her head to the bridge and was shocked because she could hear the footsteps of a person running, but even though the bridge was shaking a bit, no one was there. She was becoming distraught at that moment, but she closed her eyes and took a deep breath. When she opened her eyes, she saw a shadow of a tall man. All was black. There was nothing else to see. She panicked and ran back to the house. My grandpa was shocked and asked her, What's wrong? She just said, There was a dog chasing me. My mom went to her room after. Two days later, my mom was busy getting ready for the day. She was brushing her hair in front of the mirror when, out of nowhere, a shadow passed by the reflection. She was startled and looked back and checked the whole room but no one was with her. She began to brush her hair again, and when she glanced at the mirror, she was terrified when she saw the shadow man right behind her. She shouted and ran out of the room. The door was just to her right. She was so freaked out that she jumped down the stairs and hurt her legs and knees. My grandpa immediately went over to her and asked her what happened. She told him everything about her first meeting with the shadow man at the bridge. My grandpa just had a serious look on his face and carried mom to the wooden sofa and treated the bruises she had. But then my grandpa told her, I know that shadow man. My mom was confused and asked him, Who is he, dad? Grandpa gulped and said, He was our neighbor, Gilbert's son, Andrew. He died three years ago. It was raining very hard, so he was running as fast as he could to get home. He ran across the bridge, and when he reached the front of our house, A bolt of lightning came down and struck him, and it burned him to ashes. My grandpa had a very sad look on his face. My mom was shocked and speechless. The people who saw him die were startled and shouted. They called Gilbert and only saw his son's ID that was left half burned. Mom was at a loss for words and sad because of what happened. After Grandpa treated her injuries, he told her to just rest here on the sofa until her sister got back home so she could be with someone in their room. On the next day, our neighbor Gilbert happened to visit. My grandpa told him about what my mom encountered and Gilbert apologized because she was scared by his son. Mom just accepted the apology and wanted to rest more. After a week, my mom's legs and knees were feeling better, so she went back to her hometown devout, but she will never forget those footsteps. This isn't the most interesting story ever, but I thought I would send it in anyway. I'm also not using my friend's real names while telling this story. This happened only three nights ago. My friends and I always stay out really late or go out really late. This one night it was cold and raining, but we decided to go out anyway. It was me and my four other friends, Jacob, Mike, Brooke, and Abigail. Abigail and Brooke were staying at my house that night, and we decided to meet up with Jacob and Mike at the store down the road from my house. 
By the time we got there, we were already soaked. We were all walking to our hangout spot, which is a good 30 minute walk, and we were joking around pretty loudly the whole way. We were not even halfway there when somebody screamed at us from their car. They didn't say anything, just screamed loudly. Everyone heard the scream except for Brooke. We thought nothing of it because people driving past us at night always do that. We started to joke around about a hostage situation that happened in our town the day before and talked about how one guy got away. I didn't even know it happened, so I was pretty frightened at first, but forgot about it pretty quickly. We were still walking, laughing, and joking around ten minutes later when we heard a man yell, Shut up! at us. We turned to look behind us and saw a man in an alley across the street. We all looked at each other and none of us said anything because we didn't know what to say. The man then yelled again, People are trying to sleep! Since we were being loud, my first thought was that it was a guy who had been woken up by our yelling and such. We turned around to continue walking when he yelled again. Shut up! Brooke thought he was joking or something, so she yelled back at him. No, you shut up! As we were about to continue walking, he yells again, Who wants to talk? And he starts crossing the road to where we were. We all panicked and began running towards the nearest gas station, which wasn't too far away. The guy is running towards us, and my friend Jacob tells me to call 911, so I call them. They pick up, and I can barely hear them from our running, yelling, and the man's yelling. I tried to explain what was going on, but I didn't know how because I was so terrified. We get to the gas station, and my friend Brooke takes my phone and talks to the operator. We told the guy working at the gas station what happened, and luckily there were two customers in the store. My friends and I were in the store's corner near a cooler when we saw the guy walking up to the gas station door and noticed he had blood all over his shirt. The blood was coming from a wound on his head and a cut across his neck. The guy working at the gas station also calls 911, not knowing we already did. The guy starts yelling at us again, just repeating the same things. One of the customers, who's a little older, gets in front of us because the guy was trying to get closer to us and he also tried to grab onto my friend Abigail. The customer in the store tells the man, Back up right now. The guy says loudly, No, you back up or somebody's gonna get hurt. We then see a police officer pull up by the gas station door and ask what's going on. Brooke hands me back my phone and I tell the 911 operator that the cops are here. They told me to talk to the officer and hung up. The guy kept saying a bunch of random things to the officer and then two more cars pull up. Only one more officer comes in. The guy goes to the back of the store where we can only see his face. The officer asks him, Did you have anything to drink tonight? And he says, A lot. The officer then says, Walk outside so we can talk. The guy says, no, I'm not gonna. The officer then says, well, you're under arrest then. (laughs) For what? The guy says, laughing. For public intoxication, put your hands behind your back. The officer says, no. The guy says, trying to leave the store. The officers grab him and we hear something metal hit the floor. The officers arrest him and the girl cop says, Good thing I was in the lot. She then leaves, and the guy working at the gas station tells us to wait to tell the police what happened. The police come back in, and they ask what happened. We tell the police what happened, and he says, Okay, it's the guy we were looking for anyway. Our faces drop, and we look at each other. The officer tells us we can leave now, so we go sit by a building for a while and talk about what just happened. We try and keep our minds off things, but we soon decide it's best we go home. The next day, we see a police report on Facebook talking about the guy who got arrested late that night was indeed from the hostage situation in our town. To explain the hostage situation a little more, there were three guys who held a young lady hostage. One knew he was going to get caught, and he shot himself when the SWAT team got there. One got shot by the SWAT team, and one of them got away. I won't share too much information about him, but I'll share a few things from the police report. He was 38 and from our town. 
He was armed when he was arrested, and that's the metal we heard drop on the ground. He attended court the next day and was charged with careless use of a firearm, unauthorized possession of a firearm, reckless discharge of a firearm, possession of a firearm while prohibited, assault, and uttering threats. I'm glad those customers were present, as well as the police officer. My friends and I could be dead right now if he had pulled out his gun. The Midnight Hauntings Magandang araw mga ka-Midnight Ako si Blue Ang kwentong ito ay ipinadala ng isa nating tagapakinig At ito ay tungkol sa isang babae na napadaan sa isang ukay-ukay para mamili ng mga damit Ngunit hindi niya inaakalang may nakakabit na kababalaghan sa kanyang mga pinamimili Lahat naman tayo ay gustong makatipid sa pagbili ng mga gamit at damit. Kaya naman, isa sa ating solusyon para di mapamahal ay ang pagbili sa mga ukay-ukay. Ngunit sa aking karanasan, ay naging mas maingat na ako sa pamamili ng aking mga binibili sa ukay-ukay. Ako nga pala si Karen. Ang aking kwento ay nagsimula nang ako ay napadaan sa isang ukay-ukay at naisipang bumili ng aking mga susuotin sa paparating na debu ng aking matalik na kaibigan. Naisip kong dun na din ako bumili ng aking ipang regalo sa kanya. Buong araw akong naghanap ng damit at nakabili ako ng aking susuotin ngunit wala pa akong mapiling regalo para kay Miranda Pagbaba ko ng LRT ay saktong may nadaanan akong isang maliit na ukayan kung saan may iilang tao ang nakikitingin Naisip kong maghanap dito ng mga damit Si Miranda ay aking kababata at lagi kaming napagkakamalan na magpinsan dahil malapit kami sa isa't isa noon pa Magkasukat din kami ng damit kaya naisip kong bumili na din ng ekstra kong damit. Nang magbabayad na ako ay nakakapagtakang parang walang tao sa paligid. Biglang tumambad sa aking harapan ang isang matandang babae. Siya daw ang may-ari ng ukay-ukay. Agad akong nagbayad sa kanya at binalot na niya ang aking mga pinamili. Napatanong ako kung saan niya nakukuha itong magagandang mga damit at ngumiti lang siya. Nagtaka ako dahil hindi niya ako sinagot kaya naman umalis na lang din ako. Habang nasa biyahe ay tuwang tuwa ako dahil maganda ang jacket na pamatong na binili ko para sa sarili ko at yung bestida na napili ko para kay Miranda. Pag uwi ko ay binalot ko na agad ang aking regalo. Nang nag si Miranda, ay inabot ko sa kanya ang aking regalo at tuwang-tuwa siya ng kanyang buksan ito. Sinabi niya na excited siyang suotin ito at susukatin na niya agad iyon kinagabihan. Nang matapos ang gabi, ay umuwi na ako sa amin para sukatin din ang aking pinamili. Bago ko pa mailabas ang aking mga pinamiling mga damit, ay nagtataka akong biglang tumawag sa akin ang nanay ni Miranda. Sinagot ko ang tawag niya sa aking cellphone at sinabi nitong na ospital si Miranda. Nang tanungin ko kung ano ang nangyari, ay kinilabutan ako. Tinadtad daw ng sugat at pigsa ang katawan ni Miranda di daw nila malaman ang dahilan dahil bigla lang itong lumabas sa katawan ni Miranda 
habang nagbibihis daw ito. Bigla na lang daw siyang sumigaw at nakita nilang nagsusugat ang mga kinakamot nito. Binisita ko si Miranda sa ospital at naisipan kong gamitin ang jacket na aking binili dahil malamig doon. Pagdating ko ay inaalam pa daw ng mga doktor ang sanhi nito ngunit ang suspetsya nila ay may nakakahawang sakit itong nakuha na kumakalat sa balat. Nung pauwi na ako sa amin ay napansin kong bukas pa ang ukay-ukay na aking pinagbilhan. Naisip kong bilhan si Miranda ng scarf o panlamig dahil naisip kong baka lamigin ito sa ospital. Nagulat ako pagpasok dahil ibang tao ang sumalubong sa akin na nagpakilalang may ari. Nang tanungin ko kung nasaan ang matandang babae ay nagtaka ang lalaking Chinese dahil siya daw ang may ari nito. Nang ipinaliwanag ko ang itsura ng babaeng nagbenta sa akin ay sinabi niyang baka iyon yung pulubi na tumatambay sa kanyang tindahan. Sinabi ng may ari na laging pumapasok ang matandang babaeng iyon at nagpapanggap na may ari kaya itinaboy na niya ito. Umuwi ako nung gabing iyon na nag-aalala kay Miranda. Kaya naisipan kong ibigay sa kanya ang jacket na bagong bili ko. Dahil magkasukat kami ng damit ay naisip kong sukatin muna ang bagong jacket na aking nabili. Isa itong panlamig na jacket at sigurado akong magugustuhan ito ni Miranda. Maya maya ay nakaramdam ako ng pangangati at nantanggalin ko ang jacket ay napasigaw ako. Puno ng piksa at sugat ang aking katawan at kamot ako ng kamot sa sobrang kati. Namumula-mula ang aking balat at napuno ng nana ang mga ito. Nagsisigaw ako sa takot at agad kong pinuntahan ang aking magulang para dalhin ako sa ospital. Ipinaliwanag sa amin ng doktor na nakakuha daw ako ng tinatawag na flesh eating bacteria na nakukuha sa mga maruruming bagay. Agad kong tinawagan si Miranda at napag-alaman na ganun din daw ang nadiskubri na nangyari sa kanya. Nang investigan pa ay nadiskubring galing daw ito sa mga damit na sinuot namin na parehong galing sa ukay-ukay. Nang puntahan ito ng aming pamilya ay nagulat silang ipinasara na ito matapos ang maraming kaso ng flesh-eating bacteria sa mga namili dito. Napag-alaman din na ang matandang babae daw ang dahilan dahil nagsusukat daw ito ng mga damit sa ukay-ukay kapag walang nakatingin. Nalaman din na nakatira ang babaeng iyon sa sementeryo at nagnanakaw ng mga damit sa mga patay para suotin. Simula noon ay naging maingat na ako sa pamimili ng mga ukay-ukay at sinisiguradong labhan muna maigi ang mga damit ng ilang beses. Hinding hindi na rin ako nagsukat pa ng damit hanggat hindi ito nilalabhan. Kaya mag-ingat tayo bago tayo bumili sa mga ukay-ukay.